The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Connor Commentary, a hilarious take on news, politics, sports, and current events. It's time to buckle up. Here's Connor. And we are back. How are you today, Ben? Very good. How are you? Very good. Good. That's good. It's great. Good, great, grand, wonderful. No yelling in the studio. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I don't know. It's from Billy Madison. Good, great, grand. No yelling. Wonderful. On, no yelling on the bus. We got Borafield Man up here talking about God knows what. And all you want to do is make out with me. Great movie, man. That's an all-time classic. I, but, I could quote uh, that movie all day long. I could quote the entire thing, I think, from start to finish, pretty much. I think my favorite scene is when they're hammered and they leave the uh, flaming dog poo back at yes. the old guy's house. <laughs> and after he steps on it and they're crying laughing, he goes, he called the shit poo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, they're like, old man Clemens hates shit. <laughs> Don't like put it out with old. your poop, dear. <laughs> Don't tell me my business, devil woman. <laughs> that was a great movie. That was one of Adam Sandler's best. Yeah. Adam Sandler was an absolute... Le- he still is. He's he's a living legend for as long as he lives from all of those movies back then. Yes. Although most of his movies suck now. Do you watch anything that he comes out with anymore? Uh, probably the last new thing I saw from him was like Grown Ups Two. Yeah, which I don't. I don't love the Grown Ups movies. Me neither. I never even saw the second one. I saw the first one. It was okay. It's fine. It was a family movie. It's all right. Like, it was all right. It was nothing. Nothing like back in the day. Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, Big Daddy, The Water Boy, The Wedding Singer. I can those keep going, best. man. Those were those were all legendary movies. Yeah. Shout out to Adam Sandler. He's a man. Now he's worth like four hundred million dollars. Oh, he's worth a ton of money. A ton of money. money. <laughs> Speaking of that, somebody last week in the state of Michigan. Yes, sir. Won a billion dollars. Yes, One sir. billion dollars in the lottery. Yeah. What, what was it? Power? It was either Power. I think it was Mega Millions. Mega Millions. What would you do if you won a billion dollars? All right. What would I. Do? I mean, after it's all said and done, you'll probably get like. 400 or something million so I don't, what, it, like it doesn't even matter or something like what, that. it doesn't even matter at that point right it, well I, you see it, it's 600 a million 400 million you you can take the um that lump sum payment which is already going down yep or you can take the annuity what would the annuity be the annuity would be 50 million for 20 years I, let me just i just pulled it up yep so under the lump sum cash payment the state will impose a 33 million dollar in taxes the amount is split between the state's general purpose fund the state school aid fund, the winner. So, the, so the states won in the lottery every time. The winner or winners will owe one hundred eighty-six million dollars in federal tax. Oh, that's not bad. Under the annuity that's payment nothing. scenario, the state will collect forty-two point seven million in taxes. Oh, that's nothing. The taxes that. also will be split proportionally between the general purpose fund and the state school aid fund. The winner or winners will owe two hundred forty-one million dollars in federal income tax. Oh, that's pennies. So you're <laughs> <laughs> you're basically walk. You, you, if you won that million, you're walking away with. Yeah, you know, five hundred, fifty, six hundred million dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, think about that. One one percent of that, right, would be five million dollars a year. One percent of five hundred million, right, is five million. Sure. So that would be five million dollars a year just from a one percent return on investment. Mm-hmm. That's fucking insane. You're rich for life. You're rich for life. Yeah. When you break that down, I think that's six hundred thousand dollars a month. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll, I'll take, take it. it. Give it to me. I'll take it. Now, what do you do? I don't know. Then what do you do from there? Um, you buy property? Yeah. Do you uh, even need to buy a, buy property? I don't even know what I would, if I would even bother. Uh, You're going to make more money? I wouldn't even want to No, I'm not even money. saying like to make more money. Oh, just to have for yourself? Yeah. And I got my own house up here. I yep. got my own. I got my vacation house. And I'll just buy a third one for fun. Touche. Your life would be a vacation at that point, right? You'd have no nowhere to vacation to or from. Yeah. Because it would be one permanent vacation. Yeah, it'd be perfect. Yeah, touche. I'm fine with that. Where would your permanent residence be, Florida? Permanent? Yeah. No, I'd probably still do mass. Yep. I like mass. You like the snow? No. It snowed, it snowed last night. I How know. How much snow did you get? Like I didn't five even, inches? That much? I didn't even know inches. it was going to snow. Yeah, I didn't, no realize, I didn't realize it was snowing either until I left here, and I was like, oh, shit. I've yeah. got a, I have an hour drive. Let's see how long this takes. Yeah, took how an bad hour was and a half. that? Yeah. <laughs> 
Because you left at what, six? I left at six. That's when it first like really started snowing. Yeah, and I had to get to Sudbury. Oh, shit. Which is about an hour away from where we are now yep. in Salem, New Hampshire. And people were driving like 30 miles an hour on the highway. You have an SUV. You have all-wheel drive, right? You have an SUV. Yeah, I have a Ford Explorer. Yeah, so you'd be good. I was fine. Yeah. I was fine. My car's terrible in the snow. Your little V-dub? Yeah, not good. It's a nice car, but... Highly don't recommend driving it in the snow. There you go. Slide all over Let's the place. Let's get you a second car. You should, right? Yeah, we'll get you a second car. All right. I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that one. I'm going to get an old beater or something. <laughs> something ch- something cheap. Yeah. Absolutely. But when I looked up that thing for the lottery, right? Yeah. I saw another story about a lady in Ontario, Canada, mm-hmm. who won the lottery, $60, 60 million. Okay. So just, just, a frag, just some Trump change compared to the people in Michigan. So we'll say she walked away with like $45 million. 42, yeah, two forty five somewhere so, in there. Some something. In the, actually, in Canada, you don't pay taxes on the lottery. Ray taught me that. Really? Yes. Okay, so she walked yes. away with sixty million. Yes, they don't tax you, which is insane. Does the lottery ever get up to like a billion, like it does here? Probably not. I I don't know. I think it gets up real high. Maybe not as high as it gets up here, but I think it gets up pretty high. It's basically like the same thing that they have here. But he told me that a couple of weeks ago they don't tax you. Wow. On, on the lottery winnings. That's interesting. It is very interesting. Dude. I was very surprised. So I guess, yeah, she got the full amount then. Okay. So, so what happened to her? She played the numbers from her husband's dream. Interesting. So her husband had a dream and the, the numbers to the winning lottery came to him in the dream. How the fuck does that happen? I don't know. Do you have an explanation? No. <laughs> no, it's bullshit. So, so That's what do my you, explanation. Well, yeah, you, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. How come we don't dream up some winning lottery numbers? I don't dream. How do, we, how do we not get in on any of these rich people things? I was just asking you before, too. <sighs> Everyone pumped a bunch of money into the GameStop stock, and then it went through the roof. I don't know how that worked, either. Yeah. You don't know, either? Not really. I know. I know I, that everyone like jumped on it. All these people getting rich off these things. Yeah, and we do, we're, we're over here. We don't know what we're doing. We're not getting any free us poor schlubs. Yeah, and us poor schlubs. We're not getting this this crazy stock advice or these free numbers that we're getting in a dream to win sixty million dollars tax free. I don't know any of the tax loopholes. Anyways, if we do win, yeah, I don't how either. Do, how do these people get to these things? I don't know. I don't know. Like, they're, they're all criminals in my mind. Message Ed and ask him. <laughs> Ed, <laughs> how, how does this happen? How, do, how does how does this work? Um, but I do find it funny because, you know, it, this basically stemmed from Reddit. Yes, that's from what I saw. From the Wall Street Bets page in Reddit. And I like Reddit. And I, I don't... I just start going on Reddit. I hear all good things and then I, I, don't, I don't go on there. You'll find some pages you like. like yeah. So I like Today I Learned. So it's either, hey, maybe, maybe there's something I've me. never learned here. Or it's like, holy shit, you just learned this? What the fuck? Where the fuck you been? Right. <laughs> um, there's some good ones. But uh, this all stemmed from Wall Street Bets, which is a subreddit. And I, I don't really know exactly what happened, but this is, to me, this is what I find hilarious about it. And I'll read a tweet that kind of describes it. Okay. Um, I don't know who this woman is. Anna Kasparin. Sounds like Kasparian. I like it. So market manipulation by Federal Reserve pumping money into failing banks and corporations is okay, but Reddit users rallying GameStop is wrong and must be regulated? Of course. The entire stock market is disconnected from reality. Funny how quickly the financial press cries for hedge funds. Um, yeah. It, That's a very good point. The stock market is incredibly disconnected from reality. It, just because the stock is doing well doesn't really mean that company's doing well. Right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, because they're going out of business, right? GameStop? I have no idea. I would assume they they should have all the money in the world, though. You bring them, you could bring them this TV, and they'd be like, "Oh, six dollars <laughs> <laughs> on a trade in." <laughs> I don't like GameStop. I, I've always found them kind of scummy. Yeah, but I haven't gone to them in de- I just, decade. I, I find it hilarious that regular people found the loophole and exploited it, right. and then the people who've been exploiting loopholes forever are like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" Now this is what I was just talking about the 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 common man is is sticking it to them. They don't like that. Now they're going to get in trouble. Yeah, they're gonna come out with some law how that's like illegal, which it's already illegal, but it's not illegal for certain groups of people. But then they won't be able to do it, something like that. Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people were taking advantage of Robinhood, you know that app. Yeah, yep. Where it's like they'll give you a free stock, right? And people were taking the GameStop stock for free, and yeah, it's like I'm looking at here it was up to like three hundred thirty-two dollars. What did it start at? 
Could have been a lot, right? I have no idea. Three hundred thirty-two dollars for one share. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even. I don't understand. I don't understand the stock market because then you got to share one share in the company. But why is that three hundred thirty-four dollars in this failing company? But then there are other companies who are probably doing much better, and their shares are like eight dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> Isn't is is that correct? I guess yeah, right. Uh, so let me read you another tweet from mm-hmm. Cigar. Cigar Authority? Say, say, say I don't know, S A A G A R? How would you pronounce that? S A G A R. Saga. What is it again? S- Saga. Saga. <laughs> like Sega. Like Craig Sager. Yeah, okay. Um, he says Wall Street is shook because multi billionaires who recklessly gambled are getting screwed. They can't stand that someone other than them is making money. It reveals how much of a shame this all is. When hedge funders and others loot our markets, it's all good. But when retail investors destroy a hedge fund, then all of a sudden CNBC analysts start calling for regulation, blame foreign powers, and talk fundamentals. Touche. It's good stuff. I just wish we could have gotten involved in it somehow. Yeah, I wish I could have got my free three hundred thirty-two dollars. Seriously, <laughs> the fuck was I sleeping on? Right, you still can, right? Or there must yeah, be I don't a cap, know what there, there must be right a cap limit I, on sure it. If they'll give you a free share of a stock. Yeah, I have no it idea. probably has to be a stock that's like worth a certain amount, right? Because then you could go on and just get a stock in like um, Berkshire Hathaway. Isn't that worth like three hundred thousand dollars or something absurd? I don't know. I don't like I said. I don't follow it. I yep. don't care about it. Um, you know, I, I like knowing where my money is at all times. Touche. Which is non-existent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Same here. That's the other issue, though. If you put that money in and it goes like way up, if you only put a hundred dollars in, what's it going to go to? Like three hundred dollars? Yeah. You know. I yeah, you were right. Ed chimed in. One share of uh, Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway Class A stock is $343,450. <laughs> right. So if Robin Hood's giving up free shares of stock, you just pick that one and then you're good, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> yep. I'm going to sell it now. Yes. <laughs> and then I'll take the money back. Yeah, I, I don't know how that's Yeah, it's got to be regulated at like 10 bucks or something. Yeah. But that'd be, a good, that'd be a good way to get in on it. So big weekend last weekend. Yes, it was. Tom Brady. Did we, and did we win some money? I did not win any money, no. Oh. Did you? Did you bet? No, I don't bet. No. You don't bet either? No. How are you going to get rich quick? Listen, man, I've made. I've told you this before. I've made three sports bets in my entire life. They all came in the span of like a couple of months. Yep. It did you was, win all three of them? I won two of three. Nice. So That's I, a pretty good pace, I mean, man. Listen, That's a pretty good record. I have a 66.6666666 repeating You're win up percentage. Money. All right? Yep. I'm better than every other gambler that's, gambler that's ever 100%. existed. 100%. If you stayed at that rate, you would be wealthy. I'd be incredibly wealthy. Yeah. I'd be like Biff in Back to the Future 2. Touche. Yeah. That would be me. I'd have my own casino. The rest of the town would be a giant pile of shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, honestly, if you if you stayed at that type of percentage and you just bet all the time. Yeah. Because what a, what a professional gambler stay at? 50 something, I think. Probably like 56 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think it's something like that. So you'd be like the you'd be on like uh ESPN3 with like the poker players I wouldn't be and telling stuff. anyone what I was doing. <laughs> no. Hell no. You'd keep it under the radar? Yes. All right. I'd throw a bone to my friend Connor. All right. That, now we're talking. Like, now you got to tell me after what your what your expert picks are. Yeah. So I, what ha- did, I have the Gray's Almanac. Touche. That's that's a line for like maybe 3 people. So What <laughs> what is that from? Yeah, back to the Future 2. It's ah. going back to that. I don't remember that way as much. I know really? I watched those movies when I was a kid, but now I don't remember them. Good movies. I was too young. All right, back to last weekend. Back to last weekend. The Buccaneers beat the Packers. I was very surprised. I honestly thought the Packers were going to win. I did too. Were you surprised? Um, I mean, I wasn't blown away by it. Yeah. But I did think the Packers were going to win that game. I thought they were going to control it a little more on the ground, and I didn't think they were going to be as dumb as they were, Yeah. Uh, particularly Matt LaFleur. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not stunned by what happened in that game, really, in any way. Yeah, they barely ran the ball, now that I think about it. Yeah. The Packers, right? Yeah. I don't was, remember them running it a lot at all. There was some questionable decision-making on their front. Yep. And, uh, but when, when I was doing my prep you know, for the radio show, and I was kind of looking at some stats, I was floored by something. Now, I don't remember it specifically off the top of my head, but it was something like this. Aaron Rodgers versus winning teams in his career. Yep. When down by one or more points. Yes, I saw in the like fourth this. quarter. Yep. Is like two and forty-five. Yeah. Yep. 
I thought it was even worse. Boy, don't come back. Yeah, I saw it. It was it was a horrendous stat, whatever it was. It was 2-47? And yeah, it was and, like and, eye-popping. It was like they never win. How? Yeah, and it's kind of bullshit because one of them was like in week one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So does it really count? Like, So they, he has to be playing from the lead, essentially, then. is yes. Based on that stat. He's because, a front runner. Because that's a lot of games. Like, it wasn't just like... They come up with these stats sometimes, and it's like six games. Over, yeah, like, who cares? Over like a 10-year career. It's like, yeah. that's really a, such a small sample. No, it but this was anything. close to 50 that games. That was close to... Yeah, it was. It was ridiculous. I was like, holy shit, if that's an accurate stat, which it was from somebody like legitimate so i'm a blue check mark i'm like fuck that's well I, I i had to go back and kind of verify it you so did, i was looking yeah. through pro football reference trying to figure out yep. like the exact games and everything like that and yeah it was it was it really was, bad it, that is really bad and it's funny because on the opposite side of that you had tom brady right who the exact opposite don't leave him in the game right because he's gonna burn you in the fourth typically right and that's and that's what happened man I, I was shocked that they went for the field goal although fourth and eight is kind of a long way to go and they did need to score and then get two points so the field goal i guess he thought they'd stop them in three plays get the ball back he'd go down and score and they'd win by one but what are you, did you did you so, think that was nuts i thought it was stupid yeah because you know you're not putting the ball back in like kirk cousins hands right you know what i'm saying you're putting the ball back in Tom's hands, and Tom's going to take care of the ball for the most part. And to me, if I'm the if I was the quarterback in that situation, I'd be fucking livid. Yeah, because it's like, oh, you don't have confidence in me. Right. You don't have confidence in our offense to actually score here. The offense is what took them all the way to the the championship game to begin with. Yeah, you know what I mean. They that team and now ran you want to get their cute? offense. Yeah. So I, I would have been I would have been livid with yeah. that situation, uh, and Aaron Rodgers life rightfully so, but. To me, I've always been kind of this I've always been one to push back on the narrative that Aaron Rodgers is like this greatest of all time quarterback. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's our, he's good. He's right. really good. Right. He's incredibly talented. He's I not I, I would not put him in the top five quarterbacks of the last twenty five years. He doesn't win enough. He doesn't he win doesn't enough. win enough. He's only been to one Super Bowl. I think he's one in four in the conference championships yeah. too. So he's only made it to the NFC Championship five times. Not that that isn't a lot. It kind that's, of is. That's a lot. But, I mean, he's lost four of them and won one. Then they won one Super Bowl. So if he retires, he only wins one Super Bowl in, what, an 18-year career or whatever it's going to be. Yeah, and you know who I doubles mean, him up? Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger. You know who else doubles him up? Eli Manning. I know. That's he, even worse. Eli Manning. There are a bunch of quarterbacks out there that have won one Super Bowl. Joe Flacco won one. Yep. Brad Johnson won one. Dilfer. Dilfer won one. Who Mark else? Rippin, Doug Williams, who, who Jim else Plunkett has, won two. I'm trying to think of who else has won them in the past 20 years. It's basically just Tom Brady, Eli Manning, and Ben Roethlisberger, right? Who else is in that mix other than Joe Flacco that one year? So It's basically just Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom years? Brady, Tom Brady, yeah. So going from 2001? Yep. I know 02 is Brad Johnson. Yeah, so you got Brady, Brad Johnson, Johnson Brady, Brady. 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 Roethlisberger, Roethlisberger, Manning, okay. Manning, Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. Yes. Okay. So the Manning brothers, of Eli Peyton, Manning, Eli Manning. Then you had Roethlisberger again. Roethlisberger again. Who won in 09? Then you had the uh, Breeze. Breeze. Then okay, you had yep. Rogers. Rogers. Yep. So where are 10. we now? Now we're in 11. Eli Manning, Eli Manning. again. <laughs> 12 was Joe quickly. Flacco. Yep. 13. Who was 13? Uh, Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yep. yep. Russell Wilson. Then Brady. Then Brady. Yep. Who fifteen was Peyton Manning again? Yep, Peyton Manning again. Then Brady. Then Brady. Then Nick Foles. Then Brady. No, right? Wait, what? Brady, Brady, Nick Foles, Brady. No, 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 no. No, it went <laughs> We're so right. So no, sixteen, dumb. sixteen, seven. Oh no, no. Brady won twice, lost, and then won again. Brady won. Yeah. Well, right. Brady won in 14 against yep. the um, Seahawks. Against the Seahawks, yep. Then he won in 16 against the Falcons. Oh, yeah. And he so, lost okay. in 17 against lost the, in 17, um, then the Eagles. Won in then he won in 18 against the Rams. Yep, that was it. Yeah. Wow. That, when you think about it, though, Russell Wilson, I feel like there could be a repeat coming up with Patrick Mahomes. Remember when Russell Wilson won and then went to another one two years in a row? And everyone was talking about him. He's going to win a bunch of Super Bowls. Yeah. He has one Super Bowl still. Yep. And he honestly, I don't know if the Seahawks will win another one. I, I mean, I would be shocked if he retires with more than two Super Bowls. Maybe they'll get one more, maybe, in his career. They've got the offensive talent. They need a they always complete do. overhaul of the defense. Right. They've had the defense in the past. 
Yeah, now, well, they, now they don't. It was kind of already the Legion of getting Boom. a little old at that point. Right. The Legion of Boom was great for like four years. Yeah, maybe not even that long. Mm-hmm. Because it was a short span. Because don't forget, in 14, Browner was here. That's Browner true. was with the Patriots. Now he's he in li- prison. <laughs> yeah, he was lining up opposite of Revis. I know. Yeah. That was when the defense finally got good for the Patriots, the secondary. Yeah, that defense was awesome. That defense was awesome. They had them. They had McCordy pushed to safety then. Hightower was on the team. Which They pa- finally got good. Which Patriots Super Bowl win was your favorite? Which win? Yeah. Like, which of the games uh, was your favorite one? I'm probably going to say the Seahawks. Yeah. I love that. I love that one. My favorite team was when they lost in 2011. Okay. I loved that team, even though the defense was terrible. The offense, I remember they just scored a million points every week, and I loved it. And they, mm-hmm. all, they always won. It was when they had Gronk. Yep. They had Aaron Hernandez. They had Wes Welker. Um, I think it was Ben Javis, Green Ellis, Ugh. who would randomly run the ball. The law firm. Um, yeah, I think Woodhead might have been on the team then. But they'd put up like 35 points every week, and they'd always somehow still win. They went all the way to the Super Bowl and lost. Yeah. But I remember I loved that team. They were great. My favorite team, Patriots team of that grouping since yep. 2000, uh, 2004. 2004 was awesome, too. Great team. You didn't have the big-name wide receivers. Deion Branch was good. Yep, Deion Branch was good, yep. And I'll fight with people who think Deion Branch is Deion way Branch, better than he Deion actually Deion Branch was. was on the team in 2011, I think. He was. Pretty sure, yeah. He and came back pretty good again. He, he was okay. Yeah. He was okay. But <sighs> clock killing Corey Dillon. Right. That was my dude. Corey Dillon. Yeah, I he was a closer. Him. He was. I loved him on the Bengals. Yep. And when he came over to the Patriots, I was jacked up. Yeah, he was a beast. And he's by far the best running back. That single season is the best running back season, an individual running back for yep. the Patriots of all time. You know, they, they had a couple of seasons in the 70s where they rushed for a ton of yards, Sam Bam Cunningham and Grogan. And I'm back then, they ran the ball the a lot more, though, didn't they? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cause the defensive backs could absolutely mug. The wide receivers. Right. It was very different. It was even more violent of a game in certain ways. Oh, yeah, definitely back then. Yeah. Because now there were a lot of uh, so-so calls. What do you think about that holding call? It was a hold. It was. You could see now that he grabbed his jersey. They didn't call anything that game, though. I don't think it was the people saying it wasn't a hold. I think it was because it was a close call, and they didn't call anything the whole game. Yeah, remember it was like they late in the third quarter, go. and then the announcers were like, there hasn't even been a single penalty all game. They let everything go. Yeah. What's, that was egregious, though. That was, yeah, it was pretty bad. Because then you, once they show it after, he completely tugged on his jersey. There's a picture on Twitter, and he just like is completely holding his jersey. Yeah. But number 77, whoever he was in the offensive line, I remember, he false started like three times like blatantly, and they just – let all the plays go. Yeah. Well, the thing that was pissing me off about the reaction to that call was the flag came in so late. It did. Who it cares? Did. Right. I know. That's true, too. The so- fucking play was over. Right. It was a penalty. What the? What are we? Why are we crying about when the flag got thrown in? Who cares? Because people always have to complain, Ben. That is true. Always. People suck. No matter, no matter what. I don't like these so-called people. Touche. Touche. What did you think about... It was like a couple of weeks ago, Dan Shaughnessy oh, put oh, it out that the oh, only person he voted for was oh. Jeff Kent. You don't like Shaughnessy? No. Why? I just I think Sidebar, why don't you like Shaughnessy? He's one of the only people I, that just he annoys the heck out of me. He always puts out something that, like the demise of the Patriots for like mm-hmm. seven years now. No. And then he'll write how the Red Sox suck. And he, he's just a typical like well, he, he's the a, sky is falling. He's like, a copy and paste guy in terms of his own stuff. Every every every, yeah, every it's, January it's, it's, it's like, it's March like of every, the tomato cans. Every year, yeah. Here we, co- here we go. What is it this yeah. year? But I will say this about Dan. He's the only writer left in this town, sports writer, yep. that actually gets a reaction out of people. Touche. I don't, I don't know who anymore. anyone else is. I He's know a lot of them, but I nobody mean, yeah. cares. Right. Nobody cares what they write. They're all trying to be super smart. Yep. And Dan's just like, I'm just going to make you get mad. That's, That's a what good I'm going to do. I'm going to extract stick. an emotion out of you where everyone else is not extracting any emotions out of you. That's very true. So he voted only for I think it was Jeff Kent for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And as we found out last night, 620 or whatever it was, not a single player was voted in to the Hall of Fame this year. Right. No Schilling. No he Schilling. Was the closest. I know. I thought Schilling should have made it. No Bonds, no Clemens. Barry Bonds, dude. That's it's, it's criminal. At this it point. is. It is. It's only because of the steroids, but there yeah. are other people who are in the Hall of Fame that did steroids as well. Yes. Right? So why are they not going in now? I don't know. That's my question. 
I hate baseball writers. And, the, and do they just not like Kurt Schilling because they hate Schilling because he's 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 political views or whatever, so they won't vote him into the Hall of Fame because of that. Yeah, is that what that's what it is, right? Pretty much. Like what the heck, man? It's like either you played really well during the game and you were a Hall of Famer, or you weren't. Like there's all this extra cricket. Like I'm not, I don't like that guy, so I'm not gonna vote for him, even though he did play well. It's like that's what your job is to do. Like what do they, what do we have them doing it for then? Yeah, my my other problem is that now they vote in guys who had nice careers. Yeah, and it's like, but he was I don't, never. Yeah, I, Shane Victorino, great guy, did well for the Red Sox. He has, he shouldn't make it to the Hall of Fame. No, but guys like Burt Blylevin and Harold Baines, like they shouldn't make yeah, it into the Hall. They had nice careers, that's... but no one ever, ever once confused them for being the best at their position, the best at what they exactly. Did. And to me, that has to be a requirement. Yes, you know, they're taking away from like the legitimacy of it at this point. Ed said, "There's no one in the Hall of Fame who's big a piece of shit as Schilling." Um, I would show you Ty Cobb. Why was he bad? <laughs> he's a racist piece of shit. He really? beat up a guy in a wheelchair in the stands one time. Really? Yeah. And he's in it. Wow. Cy Cobb was a piece of shit. Uh, I'm sure there's other guys that are bigger pieces of shit. I guess Cy Young, Cy Young supposedly murdered somebody. Cy Young Allegedly, did? yeah. Really? Yep. That's what I found I never out heard last that night. Uh, I have to look, I'm going to have to look that up. That's very interesting. Yeah, I got to read that too. Um, like, do I think Schilling's a good guy? Not particularly. Yeah. In my interactions with him, I liked him. You've met him? A bunch of times. Yep. Um, you know, the state of Rhode Island has an issue, but I look at it and go, no, you should be mad at your politicians who gave him the money. Right. You know, he didn't just try and bilk you and bounce. He produced a crappy game, you know, yeah, and that is his fault, but so they, they gave him gonna, the money. Are they not going to vote him into the Hall of Fame because of a bad video game, too? And then Barry Bonds, because he did steroids, even though other people who did steroids have gotten voted in. Dude, there's evidence. I don't know. I'm sorry to a whole generation that's probably not actually, I know they're not listening to this show. Yeah. Mickey Mantle was doing juice. Come on. Let's be real. Mickey Man, what, we, we've was, got some evidence on this. Was he also was he also the one who used to drink before the game sometimes? Oh, he drank a ton. Yeah. But the Mick, um, so in high school, he was a football player as well as a baseball player. Yep. He had a bad, I believe it was a hip injury. He was hospitalized to help him get better. He's getting juice, and then he started doing it for the remainder of his career. Yeah, hey, it is what it is, right? Like, this is a whole thing. Everyone like, did it back then. We've, we've looked into this and yep. spent a lot of time, because for years, no one would believe us when we were trying to explain it to him, and then all of a sudden, it started to leak out more and more and more in the story. I was like, oh, he's another juice guy. Yep. You know, but these guys were all taking greenies. They were, they were all taking, taking all sorts of stuff. Yeah. One guy who threw, a, who threw a no-hitter was on LSD, right? Doc Ellis. Doc Ellis. Is he in the Hall of Fame? No. Okay. But he he hey, he did LSD and threw a no hitter. Good for him. More power to him, right? Oh yeah. Right. If you could throw a no hitter while tripping your balls off, I know. Whew, imagine if you did that straight. There were a bunch of that stuff. David Wells was uh, drinking before his perfect game yeah, or his no fat hitter. Fatty. Yeah, <laughs> he it was looks, a perfect game, dude. He looks like a guy who just drinks a six pack and goes out there and pitches. Yeah, <laughs> good for him. him. I, I, I know. Him. I love David Wells too. <laughs> he would pitch six innings, let up four runs, and they'd win five to four for the Red Sox all the time. It was terrible. Yeah, it was. He, he, I hated him when he was a Yankee. He'd go in there, get into jam, somehow like halfway get out of him. Yep. I, he was great, dude. I actually like David Wells. Was he part of a World Series? He might have been. He was in there in the mi- in the mix of that one. No, I think he was on that good. 05 team. Okay. Uh, that he, ended up losing to the White Sox in the playoffs. Right. I remember him being there when they, they had that. They had a <laughs> core there like the, like the Patriots where they were just unbelievable for a long time. Yeah. They never had that that uh I mean the Patriots never had that downfall even this year like the Red Sox have. The Red Sox have gone all the way to last place multiple times. And then to first place the next year. Multiple times. And I'm okay with it as long as it ends up with a title. Like if I have a Touché. bad summer where I look at it and be like, oh, I can't give a crap about this Red Sox team, they stink. Right. Like and last the next year, year they come back and they're awesome and yep. they win a title, you're like, Okay, that's they're, fine. They're the most volatile team I've ever seen in sports. Yeah. Like I remember um when uh What's his name? Before Alex Cora. John Farrell. John Farrell, yes. So the first year that John Farrell came, they won the World Series. The year before that, I was at the last game of the season, and they lost to like the Orioles. And I remember looking at the, the, the standings, and they were like 40 games back from first place. It was, it was the pathetic. Bobby Valentine year. Yeah, it was pathetic, dude. And then the next season, they come out and win the World Series. Yeah. And they've done similar things to that like multiple times. Well, they had kind of revamped the team a little bit for that year, you know, bringing in solid veterans, Shane Victorino, Mike yep. Napoli, certain yep. guys. Shane Victorino, and Mike it was good. Napoli were good. But when I look at the Red Sox, the reason they have these, you know, peaks and valleys is because 
constantly changing philosophy. Right. So it's like, okay, we got to do this. We got to spend. Okay, we got this great team. Yeah. Uh, all right. No, no, we don't want to really spend. We want to do the. We want to farm okay. the guys, and we want to deplete the farm system, and then we got to go to the farm system that's now depleted, but now we need to spend some money, but now we don't want to go over the luxury tax, even though we go over the luxury tax all the time. Yeah, they, they, do, myth, by the way. they do constantly change their strategy. That's a myth that they depleted what? the farm system. The guys that they gave oh, yeah, up, like, yeah. two of them are legit. The rest of Honestly, they like five guys. Two of them are really good. They've had some the incredible other three are people come up through the farm system. Xander Bogarts came up yeah. through the farm system, right? Yep. Absolute stud. Uh, Raphael Devers, yep, going to be a future stud. Michael Chavis, I don't know what's going to happen with him. Well, that's the case is still out on him, but he he shows some potential. Uh, mm-hmm. Ben Attendi came up through the system, right? Yep. So there's Ben Attendi, there's Bogarts, there's Devers. I'm trying to think who else they they've had a bunch of people come up through the. Well, you, I mean, you've the had Pedroia, Pedroia, you've had yep. Lester. You've had well, Buckholtz, not quite as good as Lester, but Buckholtz was phenomenal for a short period of time. He had one great season, yep. but he couldn't stay healthy, and it was always a problem with him. Right. Like you, you need to be available. If you, want to be really, if you want to be great, you have to be able to play. Bill Belichick said that about Ryan Izzo, right? The best ability the best, the best, is availability. The best ability is availability. Yeah. So, and he's been available all season, so he's been one of our best tight ends. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Great. I was, I, I was saying last week, Can't I Can't get to fucking awful. pass, but all right. I know. Hey, well, he used to be good for like one pass for like 18 yards a game. And that's it. That's it. Then, yeah, he'd be gone. Was, wasn't going to block anybody. Nope. Wasn't going to do anything else. <laughs> well, he didn't really, he wasn't really all about the other parts. <laughs> Just wanted to get that one catch. Um, Is he back next season? I don't know. I don't I know don't either. Know. But do you even care about the Baseball Hall of Fame anymore? No. I really don't think no. people... No. Sports radio people, sports columnists, like they care just yeah. for like 10 minutes because it's like, hey, it's content. It's something to write. It's something to talk about. Dude, Great. I, I Honestly, I think um, they're going to kind of be phased out. They're not going to like it. I think they're going to throw a fit. But like all of like those writers who like write like, how, or how do I want to put it? Like professionally, yeah. I think they're going to start to be phased out by like sports entertainment. People like us, people like me and Ray, people like who write their own opinionated columns where they don't have to formulate it like sports writers do now. So it, you don't have to work for the Boston Globe and write anymore. Nope. You can have your own blog. I mean, we saw Barstool go to the fucking moon off this type of stuff. I think the biggest example is Bill Simmons. Yep. Started his own guy from Boston blog in like 1997. Kept writing. All the writers are like, oh, he's just a blogger. Right. He's bigger than all of them now. Right. That's the thing now. It's like you don't have to be in like this formulated same thing. thing. Same I thing mean, happened with radio. Yep. All the radio guys were like, he's just a podcaster. Right. <laughs> now podcasts are bigger than you. That's very true. Because now look now look at the podcast. A lot of people who have uh, enormous podcasts probably have had multiple opportunities to go on the radio but just wouldn't. No, most, Pe- people, most people, like, if you're making money in podcasting, you're not going to radio. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of people who are big. I mean, I, I, I don't watch them, but like I know Pat McAfee's huge. Yep. And he was a former he was a former punter for a long time for the Colts for a while. Like I'm sure he could have gone on the radio if he wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? He said he started his own thing. Now he makes his money, and he doesn't have to worry about some corporate manager coming down and be like, you shouldn't talk about this. He probably makes more money now than he did playing in the NFL. I think he's huge. Maybe. I think he's like really big. Well, he know. had he was working with like the WWE. Oh, really? Yeah. That's that, for a while. I think he just got released. But. Yeah, that ha- that has to be huge. Yeah. But there's other ones out there that are, these things are just enormous. They're going to be making a ton of money off of it. Of course they are. Another thing we need we need to get involved in Ben. We need the stocks. We need the lot the lottery numbers and the dreams, right? I, we're, we're just give there. me the lottery number. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do all the other shit. <laughs> yeah, then the we're then number. we're good. Forget it. Forget it all from there. I don't want to sweat it out on the stock market. Yeah, touche. Nah, just give me that straight cash, <laughs> homie. <laughs> hey, sp- all right. Speaking of sports radio, though, yeah, I do have I do have one thing for you, and it is from your your uh, home station here. Okay. W e i minus the W says Patriots will be extremely and uncharacteristically aggressive this off season. Do you agree? Do you think Bill Belichick is pissed that Tom Brady's in the Super Bowl and he's home? What do you think? Why is it uncharacteristic? Who wrote it? Andy Hart? I think it was from Tom Curran. Was it Tommy? I believe so, yeah. 
I don't. That was a quote from him on the radio. I think it was. That oh, was okay. him. He said that on WEI. That was the quote, though. Patriots will be extremely and uncharacteristically aggressive. Well, they haven't had this kind of flexibility. You think that's so, what it is? Because they haven't been aggressive in a long time. I mean, 07 was like they were aggressive. They yeah, went out. They go got on. Randy Moss. They signed Dante Stallworth. Welker. They got Welker. Like they went hard. Yeah, but. I mean, this is more of a situation. They have a lot more money to spend. Yeah. So if Gilmore's gone, if Hightower opts to retire, they have like hopefully ninety he doesn't. million oh dollars. If he it, hopefully he doesn't, because I think we still need Hightower. I want him to play another season. But if yeah, if he leaves too, they're just going to have a so much money. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's really uncharacteristic. It's more uncharted waters. Okay. Yeah. You know no, what I'm I saying? Agree. Yep. Like I, I, I don't fully disagree with what Tom's saying. But I think it's more like they've never had this kind of flexibility going into an offseason before yep. to actually spend. Right. Uh, they've had years where they could spend a little bit, and they bring in vet- he likes bringing in solid veterans that he knows what he's going to get out of them, and, and that's usually what it is, like the Chris Long types. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, that's true. Yep. He's known more for bringing in those guys, but he was aggressive when he got Gilmore. Yeah. He paid more for Gilmore than anyone else. That worked like, out. It's not like he hasn't been aggressive. He just has more money. So hopefully we go on a spending spree this summer, then, right? I'm hoping we'll get a bunch of guys. Some he's gonna go. He's gonna go after Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wants a trade, right? Listen, okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this. I don't think he does. I think he was just mad that they lost. And do you want Rodgers? Do you want Stafford? Stafford? Do you want Garoppolo? Garoppolo, yep. Watson. Yeah, Watson's not gonna happen. All right. But I think we'd all take Watson number one in that group. Yep. Yeah. Age, absolutely. Ability. Age of, all of yeah. It. Everything. Yeah. But. Would as you, much as I crap on Rodgers, I'd would still you, take Rodgers. I was going to say, would you sell out for now to get him for the last like three, four sell years? Sell out? No. What? For the last three, four years of his career, they'd want at least probably two first rounders, right? Yeah, and I don't know if I'm giving him that. Yeah, because he's going to retire in the next couple he's of years. He's 37 years old. He's 30. I know. No, Nobody else is really going to play till 43. Yeah. I mean, Drew Brees made it to 42, but he also kind of crapped but the bet stunk. at the end there. Yeah, so maybe you should have stayed at like 41. Manning, when did he retire with that noodle arm? 38, I think. 38, 39. Yeah. Although Rodgers is at the top of his game still right now. Oh, he's still damn good. Yeah, he's he he is. He hasn't lost a step at all. What but. intrigues me about Rodgers is Rodgers with Belichick. Right. Because I think part of the problem with Rodgers is he's just had no respect for any of his coaches. Right. You know, between McCarthy and now LaFleur. Like, I just don't think... I mean, Rogers is a butthole. Don't get me wrong; he's he's an asshole. Yeah. Um. You can go back and read that Bleacher Report article from like two years ago that outlined the whole thing. But he's still phenomenally talented, and I wouldn't mind seeing him with a coach that he can't not respect. Touche. Like, yeah. I, they might be a good fit for each other. Honestly, they might be, a perfect they might be the fit perfect for each fit. Other. I agree. But two first round picks. Yeah, it's a lot. When you still need a lot of talent on this team, right? And there's not a ton of young talent on this team. But without a quarterback, it all goes to shit. Yeah. So it's so tough. That's that's where the, the salary cap comes in. It's like you got to pick your poison there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's why having Brady for so long helped you so much. Right. Because you knew you were setting solid at that position. You knew what you could budget out essentially for that position. Yep. How, and, and he wasn't going to be one of those guys that was taking $35 million. He might take 28 You know what I mean? Right, right. Like he was still making a shitload of money. Right. But that's a lot of money to have still available if you're $7 million yeah. less than you should be getting paid. I mean, that's a big cut to be able to give to other people. Yeah. You can go and get two people for $3.5 million a year now. That's, uh, that's pretty good. All right. You have anything to add? You have any words of wisdom before we wrap it up here? Anything good going on this week, Ben? Uh, no. 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 Next next week, it's the deadest Sunday of the year. It is I hate the, it. I it hate is it. the deadest Sunday of the year. But next week, I'm going to bring a bunch of prop bets. Oh boy, I'm going I'm to check on the on the barstool. I'm not on the barstool. Uh, DraftKings app. Yep. There's going to be a ton of stuff that we, we can we can bet on. Oh god. So I'll, I'll go over and get your opinion. I'm gonna, I'll I'll bet on the things that you tell me, and then I'll keep your record and oh, see if we come shit. out in the green or the red. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tune back next week. We'll go over all the prop bets you can imagine. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.